Hello. Oh dear, I don't know what went on there. Guys, today we're talking about the year I felt dead. I wasn't actually dead, but I felt extremely dead. Dead inside, dead outside, dead everywhere. Like I was a big numb ball of deadness. Have you ever felt like you didn't exist or you're watching your life sort of from someone else's perspective but in your head or have you ever just felt completely numb and you're like "Mm, mm, what's going on here yeah well me too it's a horrible feeling that I genuinely wouldn't wish on anybody else right and that is dissociation you end up questioning your life and your existence and you're like well if I can't feel anything if I can't do anything if I just if I'm just here and like what the heck is going on then you kind of yeah you have a bit of an existential crisis probably where a lot of mine comes from (laughs) yay but I want to reassure you to those of you who are out there I have had a dissociative year where I felt genuinely dead like actually like what what's going on am I dead and I came through it after some very hard work and I want to tell you today all about it yeah I do for my sins and I want to help you get through one if you're going through one too anyway welcome back guys I am Dawn I'm a doctor what really I say that every time because I I just I don't know I still see myself as a little child inside what's going on with my singing today and basically I like to be a bit fun and I feel like being a doctor is not very fun sorry and yeah I also want to report if you're listening by the way you won't notice but if you're watching I am actively pouring with sweat like unimaginable amounts actually it's not started dripping yet but it's like it's the afternoon sun comes right into this room no one cares about this but I want to set the context okay it's 27 degrees it's effing boiling like I know that's normal for most people but I don't have aircon and also whilst you're podcasting I can't have a fan on and be like in the background nobody wants to hear that so (coughs) I'm sweating it out for you and I've got an ice pack around my stomach which should probably come off now because um well, I think it's not not cold anymore. So, there we go. It was working, though. But <laughs> Sorry about that one. Okay, so, yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to be discussing my story in a bit, but let's get into what is dissociation. I think dissociation is an umbrella term for a few different um a few different symptoms or a few different conditions and it's it's kind of like the umbrella term of having uh low mood you can have low mood in depression or uh maybe not actually maybe that's a bad one you could have i don't know suicidal thoughts in many different conditions like anxiety depression schizophrenia but it doesn't mean that you have schizophrenia because you have suicidal thoughts or you have depression because you have suicidal thoughts do you get what i mean hopefully so just because you have dissociation doesn't mean you have a specific disorder you could have dissociation and have ptsd you could have dissociation and it just be normal you can have dissociation and have depression do you see what i mean like it's it's dissociation is a symptom that comes in many different forms and my god i look disgusting (sighs) okay we're rolling on but i'm gonna read to you (sighs) which I know is like a little bit cheaty, but I couldn't be asked to write them all down and learn them all. So I'm just going to explain to you some of the, describe to you even, some of the symptoms that you can get. And then I'm going to talk to you about the ones that I had a bit later. So don't worry, um, I'm not just going to be reading from a website my whole life. Um, So there's something called... This is within the dissociation umbrella, okay? Dissociative amnesia. It's kind of like when you're driving and then you daydream, essentially, and then you, like, get to your house and you're like, fuck, how did I get here? And you just don't remember the whole journey. And that's quite a common one. But there are other ones where, for example, you might not be able to remember parts of your life. But then I'm like, right, I think about this because people have asked me, And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I was four. I don't know if I remember it or not. And also, I don't know if I don't know, if you know what I mean. Because, you know, I don't know my whole life. And surely I don't remember everything anyway. And then I'm not going to remember if it's like, you know, if it's 
I don't know. Like, I don't know if I don't remember because I don't remember it. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, <clears throat> they've also put down, forget how to do something you've been able to do well in the past. Find that you have items you don't remember ever owning. I don't feel like that's me, but there's another one. Oh, the the one that I just talked about, which was uh, driving is called a dissociative fugue. Feeling like the world around you is unreal. So I think on the more severe aspect or like maybe not severe but there's a there's a like a variance of of symptoms within that umbrella right so they've put here see objects changing shape size or color that kind of sounds like hallucination to me but whatever um feeling detached or separate from the world around you seeing the world as lifeless or foggy that's one that I got it just felt like like it wasn't there like I just couldn't fucking access the world like I don't know how to describe it apart from I just wasn't in touch with the world and I feel like it's not a if you're listening to this and you're like what the heck is she talking about this bitch cray then maybe you haven't experienced it but there are situations probably where you have experienced it like I said when you're driving somewhere and then you're like oh my god what happened or when you're daydreaming or there's another one where you're like sick and doing something you're so engrossed in it that you just forget about the world around you and So you have experienced it, but probably not to the same degree that people with like troublesome, like actual, you know, like problematic dissociation have felt. So feeling like you're seeing the world through a pane of glass, feeling like you're living in a dream. I think I had that one quite a lot. Feeling as if other people are robots, even if you know they aren't. This is called derealization. Um, feeling like you're looking at yourself from the outside this is called depersonalization i had this but like i can't remember what that film is called where the like robot they're not robots they're like characters the moods are sitting in somebody's head and like you know reacting to the world around them that's how i felt but to myself i can't remember the film let me just figure that one out oh it's called inside out that was quite easy to find (laughs) I just put film with moods in head. Okay. So, yeah, feeling as though you're watching yourself for a film or looking at yourself from the outside. Feeling as if you're just observing your emotions. Feeling disconnected from parts of your body or your emotions. I felt like someone could fucking punch me in the face and I wouldn't even notice. Feeling as if you're floating away feeling unsure of the boundaries between yourself and other people now a lot of these things sound wild right i agree and that's what i mean is it's in it's almost unexplainable and you sound clinically insane like i'm floating away i'm i'm not real i don't feel real but like thankfully we're at a time in in the world where you know enough people have experienced and also verbalized this symptom that people are like oh yeah shit is actually real like she hasn't just got hysteria or whatever let's put her in a mental asylum like well that is what would have happened 50 60 years ago scary isn't it um this is there's also feeling your identity shift and change that's identity alteration um these are more like identity ones uh which i didn't really get but um identity confusion difficulty defining what kind of person you are and then some people getting like flashbacks or um triggers and then so yeah like I said there are lots of different types of dissociative disorder but you can also get dissociation as a symptom within um within other mental health conditions so depression ptsd very common anxiety as well i suppose um but there are specific dissociation dissociative disorders right so dissociative identity disorder depersonalization disorder derealization disorder dissociative amnesia dissociative amnesia with fugue other specified dissociated disorder unspecified dissociative dissociative disorder that was a lot of s's that was hard to say okay so um it can also come in uh but like per- personality disorders is another one that you can get especially identity ones or multiple personalities 
as well. Anyway, there we go. I hope that's kind of summarised the kind of symptoms that you'll get. So, I didn't actually see how common it was, but I feel like the, the, I think it's more common than we realise. I think, um, for me, I just, I really didn't want to tell people because I was really worried about losing my job. I was worried about, well, that was mainly it actually. (laughs) I was worried about losing my job because, and let's get into my story all right let's just do it let's jump double feet in my story you remind me of a west side story maria maria oh dear i need to stop singing i'm sorry i think this happened before and then things stopped and then there we go i haven't got a weird thought for today and i'll have to try and come up with one i'm sure i can find one in somewhere some place or another okay oh if you're new to the podcast by the way we do a weird thought section sometimes i remember sometimes i don't i'm very sorry that's my my, uh, emails going off there okay my story i've had woo a very traumatic life her uh, what i started off saying childhood and then lifestyle and then it kind of went nah. a very traumatic life not lifestyle i think my lifestyle is very atraumatic actually so i'm kind of, yeah i'm kind of used to talking about it now so i didn't go into details but Maybe I should put my silly glasses on to talk about my silly life. There we go. I never know if this is offensive, but then whatever. So, but it's okay when I'm I'm being derogatory to myself, isn't it? Yes. Googly eyes say yes. Anyway, so basically, um, I don't know why I put these on. I feel like now it's like masking it looks like I'm masking my my trauma but like I actually just did it maybe it was subconscious I don't know okay so I've got my glasses on so traumatic life event just get on with it Dawn right so I've had some horrible stepfathers yay um you know one might call them abusive and the thing that happened in what was it must have been 2016 18 I don't know can't remember one of those oh no probably 16 um was my stepfather got diagnosed with cancer like really fucking terminal like late stage like mets everywhere metastases i mean um anyway so he died very very quickly within like four weeks of being diagnosed and i went to his funeral and i felt no sadness and i was very confused okay i was confused because i was like why am i not sad everyone else is sad um like okay i'm gonna admit it i was a bit happy i was like he's fucking gone from the world goodbye you absolute wanker and i felt awful thinking that at somebody's funeral you know but then i was like well it was a, he wasn't like, you know, it was a pretty much a big drain on, on society, on the world, and also on specifically the people around him. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I went to, because of his shittiness, um, I went to something called EMDR therapy. Now, EMDR therapy is eye movement desensitization, EMDR, uh, desensitization, I can't remember what the R stands for now, but I don't think it's that important. Anyway, you basically, I'm very sorry you can hear the ambulance in the background, but I'm going to keep talking. So you basically, my guy had a, um, had a, I think it was a coin, like, he was a bit wacky, let's put it this way, a coin on a stick. He had like sellotaped it, I believe. A coin on a stick. Anyway, he waggled his stick around, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, like a grandfather ticking clock. You know that, like pendulum? And, but like upwards. And it's supposed to, you're supposed to like think of the traumatic event in your life and also watch the waggling stick or whatever object they use. And that is supposed to access some kind of inner brain thing and like, you know, desensitize you to the trauma. However, okay, now trauma is a long thing to get over. It's not just like, "Mm, done, yeah, I'm over it. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, I just did one hour therapy and I am sorted all of my childhood issues from 20 years gone (laughs) yeah so no that doesn't happen unfortunately um wouldn't it be great wouldn't it be lovely 
but it doesn't so alas here we are anyway this man i can't even remember his name now i'm trying to remember but he was pretty cray um he you know he was like a trained psychologist right so he basically did his waggly stick thing and then um what happened was i dissociated because of the stress of like thinking about it etc etc i dissociated and the thing is oh another ambulance great (laughs) fuck me can you go die somewhere else please (sighs) anyway so i'm talking about my trauma i hope another one doesn't go past like seriously i'm gonna feel real bad if something like really significant has happened um Anyway, what was I saying? After I got rudely interrupted by those noisy cars, noisy vans. So, anyway, so he made me judge, I guess, score my traumatic brain, like, um, feelings or how, like, how present the feeling was, how distressing it was from zero to ten. Ten being like, ah! like but worse but i don't want to deafen you so you know but like fucking screaming rocking in a corner zero being nah what what are you talking about no that didn't happen um and mine went down quite quickly but that was because i dissociated and what happens is your brain just goes oh this is stressful um let's block this out and not feel anything so what happened was i skipped away very happily feeling cured after two sessions like unheard of okay everybody i have told since then all of my counselors sounds like i've had bloody loads but like anybody i've told not that i tell a lot of people any healthcare professional that i've told who's involved in my care um has been like whoa two really like that's that's insane and i was like yeah like it definitely was too quick anyway i emailed this guy and this is how weird it was like we emailed like who emails their clinician (laughs) i don't know so today is just full of background noise i'm afraid that was a motorcyclist going past anyway um so i emailed him like hi i feel dead um i can't feel anything and i don't feel alive is that okay is that normal like am i dead did you kill me and he was like oh never heard of that before why don't you come in and i'll uh, have a chat to you so i came in bear in mind this man's a fucking trained psychologist like he's not just any old maybe he was but he's not sh- shouldn't have been just any old rando like walking about on the street with no mental health knowledge okay he's like no i don't know like i'm sure it'll get better and i was re- it was really bad okay this went on for a year right my at least a year my symptoms and they varied um yeah i think maybe even longer actually shit i'm gonna have to change the title of this episode how i felt dead for two years it was a long time because it went into f1 um and i think i was sort of coming out of it at the end you know in f2 so like 2017 to 2019 so yeah it was probably like two years or so and oh boy what a fucking journey right so my i've already mentioned some of my symptoms right so watching i felt like i was watching myself talk so oh my god i thank god i don't have it now right so it's like i i'm like controlling myself i'm like sitting on the sofa or something not i was in my head i was in my head but like me as a human okay it sounds weird me as a human i was like back here rather than like here okay and uh, if you're just listening i'm pointing to like the back of your head like if i'm sitting in the back of my head compared to like i am my head <laughs> oh i know it sounds silly but like these symptoms make no sense okay they don't unless you've experienced them it doesn't make any sense all right so i'm in my head but i'm not controlling myself i don't know but anyway i was controlling myself because i never did anything weird like i wasn't like i didn't find myself like wandering down the road like in my slippers um interestingly i actually saw an old lady walking down the road in her dressing gown an old russian lady with dementia and she instead of having slippers on she had period sanitary towels 
on her feet like attached anyway just wanted to throw that one in there that can be my weird thought for the day wearing sanitary towels instead of shoes there we go that's that's what old age does to you so um yeah what was i even talking about sanitary towels um yeah so i felt like holy fuck can i i was having a lot of help at this point right so i was able to go to like counseling or cbt every week like the uh, uni um the foundation school was so good to me like i cannot like it was hard because i was hard work like fair enough but they were oh my god i thought it was another ambulance they were so good to me in terms of like let me go to appointments and making sure i went as well and i was in touch with my gp and like giving me time off and stuff if i needed it or although i would never like sign myself off i would always just like get to a breaking point and then be like <gasps> okay that only happened once but there we go so yeah I was worried because I was like am I okay to work like am I okay to even be a human because I'm walking around and I don't feel like I'm in control of myself although I am and I'm not doing anything weird and I'm doing everything I'm told to do but it feels like someone else is doing it like I I don't know all right it felt automatic that's what it felt like but like a kind of distressing automatic not like wow this is I'm just doing something that's really easy it was like I was sat in the back of my head like what the fuck like uh, let me control it let me I want to be involved um so that was probably the worst one and yeah there have been a lot of techniques over the years that I have tried to work with. So let's talk about quickly why we dissociate. And I think it's kind of obvious from my my initial um, my initial discussion was, you know, number one, other mental health disorders. Like I said, it can be a symptom of other mental health disorders. So I did have depression and anxiety and I had that a EMDR that was like not working. So I had so many reasons to feel dead okay number two i think it started as a coping mechanism for my brain because and this is quite common when you're when you're asked to relive or you're experiencing inescapable trauma that's even happening to you right now um although in theory my trauma at that point was escapable but if i just didn't realize what the result of like triggering it would be Anyway, the the trauma, if you're a child, for example, and you're being abused, like, the trauma is kind of inescapable because often you can't just run away, you can't um, physically leave, uh, so, and you often don't seek help because it's, you're scared and it's, you know, you have, con- people have control over you, so your brain escapes mentally rather than physically also you might dissociate if you are reliving any previous traumatic events or the last one maybe this isn't like a complete list but these are the ones that i have found or drugs specifically alcohol can make you feel numb kind of not really here like a bit like uh, like i'm slapping my face uh, like i can't feel stuff right um or medications if you're like it can be a side effect of a medication i can't think of one in particular but um a medication coming on or off or other drugs um i don't know like maybe if you're having a come down or something off like mdma i don't know whether that that might be a side effect for you okay now let's get on to the fun stuff the fun the fun stuff i don't know if it's fun Maybe for fun times, I should put on... Oh my god, I just realised that my glasses should should be on for the weird thoughts section. Like, how silly of me. But I don't have a weird thought, apart from the one I've already said. So, anyway, I think they've had enough wearing for today. I, I think they look fucking so funny. Like, come on, if you don't like them then please leave so okay how to manage it no i'm joking don't leave (laughs) if you don't like them i don't know what i'll do but i will cry so if you tell me that's a danger but i would love it if you love them like i do 
I just think they look funny. Anyway, how to manage your dissociative disorder or dissociation symptoms? Treat the underlying medical issue. So if you are drinking lots of alcohol, fucking stop it. Like, come on, sort your life out. Uh, No, sorry, that was sarcasm but like try and seek help for overcoming your drug or alcohol addictions because drugs don't make things better my friends in fact they only mask the problem and the but in terms of like you might want to go on to or you might want to talk to your doctor or whoever's prescribing your medications which hopefully is a doctor um (laughs) uh, you might want to speak to your doctor about uh, changing a medication if it's being particularly naughty for you Mm, i can hear something but i don't know what it is so to a different type of medication or a different medication now the one thing that i have found very useful right what is that i think it's my computer but it'll have to just cope because it's it's like I think it's overheating um it's really hot like seriously so hot and I'm feeling sorry for it because I'm boiling too and it can't sweat so it's turned its fan on maybe I'll take the paper off don't want to set it alight do we (laughs) <laughs> okay um so counseling and therapy have been my biggest go-tos and i have i was gonna say bi-weekly but it's actually oh shit what's it called fortnightly counseling sessions so i have it with a private counselor because you're not gonna get that on the nhs sorry you're just not and i it is expensive okay it's like 60 pounds a session which is why i decreased it to once every two weeks but also you have to think like what about your mental health is that not the most important thing in the world like your physical and mental health and like one of the most important things as well as some other things like housing and you know clean water and food and friends and family etc but like it's up there you know you can't enjoy food and friends and family and having a life if your mental health is shite can you so i see it as an investment or a long-term you know prophylaxis because i obviously do have mental health problems and i want to try and keep them as good as i can because when i was young I just fucking let them slide down and well that was a bad time because the lower you let them slide the longer it takes to get them out of that trough so I've also put avoid drugs like obs um some people suggested with dissociative 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 thoughts is to keep a diary now for me I actually found that just not thinking about the thoughts was better for me now I think it can go one of like two ways you can either not think about the thoughts or you can keep a diary to monitor them and say okay this is what makes my thoughts more present and this is what triggers off my dissociation. Now, if you already know that link, I personally, no, this is just me, I don't like keeping a diary because I, it just makes me focus on the symptoms more. And I'm just like, mm, no, I don't want to like, I know it's like, oh, you know, you got to think about stuff and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, for me, I don't want to think about how, like, how absent I'm feeling from life. It just actually makes me more stressed and think about it. And then I get more dissociated. <laughs> So I found the things that made me feel more alive. That was, I love to feel nature on my skin. That being in particular, uh, cold air, rain, or just like the feeling of like a, yeah, just nature, like cold. I, I actually quite like feeling cold, um, like wind on my skin. Um, having yeah like just going out and having the rain drop on your face like for me going outside and being in nature was like a really strong uh bring me back to life vibe other people might go to more extremes and i don't know if you've watched twilight which is like a film it's also a book by stephanie mayer but um she one of the main characters bella this isn't might be a spoiler so if you haven't watched it then maybe skip a bit skip like a minute or so so basically she edward leaves her and 
Edward's her like boyfriend who's a vampire um and she misses him so much but she gets these like hallucinations or I don't know if they're real but whatever um she gets hallucinations of him saying no don't do it when she does something dangerous so so she starts to like do all of these dangerous things as in adrenaline junkie stuff like jumping off cliffs and stuff um riding motorbikes etc in order to feel get these hallucinations now i kind of see that somewhat in parallel to what people might do if they're having a dissociative episode they might want to feel more so like they're like oh i'll go and i'll be an adrenaline junkie uh not you know they don't have that thought process but if they're an adrenaline junkie then that kind of pushes them to feel more because you get the adrenaline rush but I don't know if I recommend that as such because then you're always pushing for the next thing and you can't get an adrenaline rush in everyday life like maybe you can you could go on a bike it's also a bit dangerous um so do what that do with what do with that information what you will I would say if you're at work and having these symptoms just take some time take some extra time just to say okay I'm going to double check what I've done here maybe get somebody else to check it maybe explain to your employer like your your situation and they will give you some extra support I understand that's easier said than done but um, that's what I did and that really helped you know I was probably more heavily watched than someone else uh, in the same position now if you have severe symptoms of like amnesia or fugue or whatever I've been watching some survival programs okay so I know it's not like you're not going to go wandering out into the desert probably but I would say always tell someone like where you're going um keep your location services on on your phone always have it nice fully charged um I mean these are just this is just bloody great life advice actually so for everybody have your phone fully charged before you go out anywhere um and I always take an extra battery pack with a charger with me especially if you're going somewhere like outdoorsy because the amount of the survival programs that I watch they're like this is why people this is why this situation went wrong and it's always because they run out of phone battery or um they don't have any signal which I find a bit crazy in America and Canada you can't call emergency services without phone signal they're doing something wrong there um yeah tell people when you should be back and always just take like a snack with you in case or like maybe a few snacks in case things go badly and a water bottle and stuff now I'm like yeah that's thinking like extreme survival crazy mode but you know it depends how severe your symptoms are I think just doing simple things that make you happy for me I really like like I said going out in nature I really love hanging washing out outside I know it's fucking weird but like the fact that I love it not that I do it it's not that weird that I do it but I love doing that and I love walking around outside without any shoes on dangerous adrenaline junkie I know and I also I really love acting I I kind of go into like a dissociative fugue like when I'm doing that like I really sometimes I get fully into the zone and I just forget there's even an audience there and that could be in itself a high, uh, it could just be hyper focused but it could also be like you're in the zone and not seen negatively but it also could be like a I don't know dissociative thing but I see it as a positive thing because actually I'm having fun whilst I'm doing it I'm not like stressed but um so yeah dissociation doesn't have to be negative like I daydream quite a lot and I wouldn't say that's a negative thing to do as long as you're not like flying a plane or something or landing a plane maybe so do simple things that make you happy I've got a magazine called the simple things very obvious and I just love reading it like it makes me feel really good it makes me feel really present and it's got like monthly advice tips and if you're in the UK I think it has a a non-UK um electronic version as well so go check it out anyway fucking sick mental health magazine I it's not specifically for mental health but it's just like living a beautifully simple and um nature filled life and maybe it's just me maybe it's just me who loves it but anyway I also want to reassure you that it will go away with some work now don't just assume that oh dawn says it's gonna go away so i'll just leave it and it'll go away no i did a lot of work to like work with my mental health and i went to appointments every week like i said or sometimes even more and it wasn't specifically about um you know dissociation but it was just about my mental health in general and some like traumatic things etc so it all contributes though doesn't it it all 
all it's just mental health like fixing like healing so just generally working on your mental health if you're in the uk and you want to go on the nhs to get your mental health stuff like therapy bloody get in there now okay i'm telling you it's going to take six months to get anywhere so just get your shit together anyway if you're if you're feeling like a bit uh, now then I would consider getting on the waiting list. Number final, final number. I don't know what number it is. There are some specialist associative clinics, which I actually did look at when I was in the the true, you know, realm. No, that's not that's not the word. True, like, difficulty. The true pinnacle, one might say, of my dissociation. And it's called Clinic for Dissociative Studies. And it's in London. Um, they specifically obviously focus on dissociative disorders and if you do need help uh, you go I think you need a they want a referral from your GP so I never did it because I felt like I was getting better um but if you really are struggling with it I would go check it out there might also be some other ones in other countries or they might even do like an online thing this one in london so you might not have to travel there they might just do online consultations which would be great so go check all of those things out and let me know like let me know in the comments down below <laughs> love it, it rhymes let me know what you thought of the episode are you currently going through a dissociative episode and like feeling really shit has this episode helped you like I'd love to know um, and share it with uh, other people if you think that they need it too. Or do you want me to do any episodes on any other topics? Because I have lots of things to talk about and lots of words and lots of energy to speak words and I'd love to know if you know you're struggling with a particular thing leave it in the comments down below or send me an email um or send me an Instagram message or a Facebook message I do check them all periodically um and yeah thanks so much for listening guys um if you're listening on the podcast that is great (laughs) I don't know what I was going to say there if you're listening on the podcast then there is a YouTube video it goes up in two weeks as you may know if you're listening or watching on youtube by the way you can actually just listen that's a phone you can actually just listen to me uh you know if you're doing your um chores or you're going like driving or whatever you don't have to listen on youtube i will leave the link in the description or if you can just look on spotify uh backseat positivity podcast or literally on any streaming platform um, for podcasts, or there is my own website where you can, I believe, download uh, the episodes and listen to them. So you don't need to just watch me, because I know that some people are like, oh, I don't know if I want to sit down and watch like a 40 to an 40 minute to an hour episode. Like, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I don't sit down regularly and watch podcasts, but I do listen to them, especially on uh, when I'm driving. So, or when I'm doing chores, because I fucking hate chores, like cleaning. So, you could listen to me whilst you're cleaning, having a great time. So, yeah. I don't know what my episode's gonna be. I'm b- By the way, I'm sorry for this episode being late. It is a day late. I just... I was going through a bit of an issue yesterday. Basically, I had like a really unproductive day and I get really sad when I don't do anything, which like sounds really silly, but I feel really unproductive. And then I'm like, and I just like get worse and worse and worse. And I just felt really sad. So I just, I wasn't in a good place to be uploading a, or like talking to a microphone for an hour. So yeah, thanks so much for listening, guys. I'll stop blabbering on now and I will see you every Monday and uh, Thursday. Bye.